You're watching The Legal Breakdown. Glenn, we've got some surprise news out of Judge Cannon's courtroom down in Florida. Can you explain what just happened here? Yeah, Brian, Judge Cannon was not only presiding over Donald Trump's documents case until she dismissed it without any real legal basis to do it. She also caught the assignment of a defendant by the name of Ryan Routh, who was the guy that allegedly was lingering outside the fence at the Mar-a-Lago golf course with an assault rifle. And uh, the allegation is he was intending to maybe uh, make an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Um, well, she is now presiding over Routh's criminal case. Routh's attorney moved to have her recused, removed from presiding over Routh's case because of the unusual and unnatural and extraordinary relationship she has with Donald Trump, as evidenced by lots and lots of factors. And just today, Judge Cannon denied Ryan Routh's motion to have her removed from the case and have a fair, independent, and impartial judge um, assigned to preside over Routh's case. Routh's case in which Donald Trump is the victim. Now, I wouldn't say it's shocking that Judge Cannon said, you know what, I have no actual conflict, there is no appearance of conflict, and as the federal law provides, no one can reasonably question my impartiality. That's the legal standard when, for when a judge must remove themselves, must recuse from a case if their impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Well, she went through factor after factor after factor about how she has shown favoritism to Donald Trump and how Donald Trump has shown favoritism to her. And then she concluded, I'm going to suggest contrary to the evidence that no one but no one can reasonably question her impartiality to preside over a case in which Donald Trump is the victim. Um, you know, when you look at what Donald Trump has done for Judge Cannon, and when you look at what Judge Cannon has done for Donald Trump, I am hard pressed to say she's the right judge to preside over a case involving somebody who was trying to assassinate Donald Trump. I mean, it's not just that Donald Trump appointed her to that extraordinarily cushy lifetime appointment as a federal judge. You know, that is something that very few lawyers ever get the benefit of, a lifetime appointment on the federal bench. Donald Trump appointed her. She abused her judicial discretion in Donald Trump's favor not once, but twice, and was reversed for it by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. Of course, she then went on to dismiss Donald Trump's classified documents, obstruction of justice, and espionage case with not only no precedent supporting her dismissal, but contrary precedent that suggests she should not have dismissed his case. Of course, that's up on appeal. That will probably be the third time the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals reverses her. And then, remember, Donald Trump, I'm going to use a legal term here, Brian, shits all over every judge, federal and state, except Aileen Cannon. He praises her to the hilt. And most recently, what did we learn? Well, she's on his short list to be attorney general. Right. You know, dangling in front of Judge Aileen Cannon, an extraordinary position. Mind you, she's already a federal judge. That's pretty darn good. But you know what? There are 890 federal judges sitting as of today. You know how many attorney generals there are? One. You know how many there have been in our nation's history? Only 85. So yes, it is even a more important and more prestigious job to be Attorney General of the United States than it is to be just one of 890 federal judges. Notwithstanding all of that, there's a real unnatural relationship, almost a symbiotic relationship between Donald Trump and Judge Cannon. She said, doesn't matter. I can fairly preside over a case involving somebody who was going to assassinate Donald Trump. I think that's a bad decision by Judge Cannon. Now, I, I just want to caveat this by saying, I, and, I, and I think I can speak for you here, like we, we don't care about Ryan Routh. This isn't to defend Ryan Routh. This is the principle of having a judge preside over 
a case here with Ryan Routh, but also, but also the other case, the classified documents case that she was presiding over, just the principle of having a judge who is so closely aligned with Donald Trump presiding over cases involving him. That's that's the issue. I don't want to give the, the impression that, that we're like that we're out here running cover for this guy who may or may not have been engaged in some attempt to assassinate Donald Trump. Uh, but but with that said, you know, we have Trump's praise of her and also the reporting that she was that she's primed to be elevated to Trump's own attorney general. If that's not enough to warrant a recusal, what is? You know, Brian, it is the appearance of potential favoritism or bias in favor of anybody involved in a case, including a victim, and Donald Trump is the charged victim in the Ryan Ralph case. It is that appearance of possible bias that sort of erodes the public's confidence in the way the trial is presided over by the judge and in the outcome that is reached. You know, I will fight for anybody's right to a fair trial and a fair judge, including Ryan Routh and Donald Trump. That's the way the system works. So I think it is um, a poor decision on her part because people will look at every decision she makes and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. She has shown, shown such extraordinary, sometimes lawless, favoritism toward Donald Trump previously, and he looks like he is going to, in return, maybe make her attorney general, and yet she can be entirely fair to the guy who is alleged to have wanted to assassinate the victim, Donald Trump, who has done such extraordinary benefits for Judge uh, Cannon. It, it really it stinks to high heaven, and, and I think a fair, independent, and impartial judge should be appointed to preside over Routh's case. But here's the thing, Brian. It was almost a foregone conclusion in my mind that she would deny the motion. She would not remove herself. Why? Because if she did, if right. she agreed that there was an appearance of bias and maybe Routh wasn't going to get a fair trial, well, then the flip side of the coin is that's all but admitting that you also may not preside over Donald Trump's criminal case once right. the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals reverses her dismissal and returns that case to the trial court. So I'm not at all surprised that she made this decision, even though I think it's a decision that is harmful to the prospect of justice and to the public's perception of the fairness of the process. I am curious if and hopefully when the 11th Circuit decides not to send this case back to Judge Cannon because she's been rebuked by the 11th Circuit numerous times already and because we have this new reporting that says she might be elevated to his AG if Donald Trump wins. So if they determine that there is a reasonable appearance of a conflict, can Ryan Rouse's attorneys then use that decision from the 11th Circuit, even though it's in a completely separate case, to inform another effort to have that case removed? I'm just curious about that. Absolutely. In fact, if Judge Cannon were an honest broker of the law and the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals removed her from the case, listen, they reversed her twice for abusing her discretion in Donald Trump's favor, and she had to take her marching orders and move, you know, through the case accordingly, having been reversed. You have to accept the rulings from the appellate court. And so if they remove her from the case, the smart thing for her to do would be to, sua sponte, on her own, reconsider her earlier ruling, refusing to remove herself from Ralph's case and say, listen, circumstances have changed because yeah. the Eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals has entered a ruling that I must abide by, and the implications, the extension of that ruling, militate in favor of me saying, you know what, I also need to get off the Ralph case now that I've been taken off the Trump case. That would be the right thing for an honest judge to do. Now, in terms of what happens next, are Ryan Rouse's attorneys going to appeal her refusal to recuse up to the 11th Circuit? So then we'll have two cases involving Judge Cannon's ability to preside over this case, both sitting at the 11th Circuit? You have stumped me in part. I don't believe, Brian, that a, a motion to recuse is necessarily an immediately appealable issue, like an immunity issue. If somebody claims that they are immune from prosecution and the judge rules, no, you're not, we're going to trial, that is immediately appealable because if the judge got it wrong, that person should not be required to stand right. trial. On a recusal issue, if the judge got it wrong, it just means that um, the person 
would be going to trial in any event with another judge. So I, I, my, my gut tells me, and I, I would have researched this topic had I thought of it, that it's not immediately appealable the way an immunity ruling is. But what I'm going to do is phone a friend later and call Joyce Vance, another legal analyst who is an expert on all things appellate procedure, and I'll run that question by her. Okay, and finally, let's finish off with this. Um, because I know a lot of people have this question, but in terms of the longevity of Judge Cannon on the bench, I mean, we have somebody who we see is so overtly corrupt, so deferential to Donald Trump and presumably to his party. What is the, what, what's the process here, um, depending obviously on the makeup of Congress at the time, but from removing her from the bench? It would be impeachment and conviction. I mean, that's really the only way you can So remove. basically we're looking at a simple majority in the House and then two-thirds of the Senate. I, I believe that's right. I'm not an expert on congressional procedure, but I do think you can impeach on a simple majority and you have to have two-thirds in order to convict at a Senate trial and thereby remove the judge from their federal position. Um, it doesn't happen often. It has happened in our nation's history a handful of times, but um, I don't hold out a whole lot of hope that we're going to see her dislodged from the federal bench anytime soon. I do hope we see her dislodged from cases in which her impartiality can and should reasonably be questioned, like both the Ralph case and the Trump case. Okay, well, I know that we haven't heard the last from the Judge Cannon courtroom. So we will, of course, stay on top of this. And as soon as we have any updates, we'll bring them to you. For those watching right now, if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels right here on the screen. That is also the best way to support our work. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.